Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing different measures of concentration. So here we're, we're thinking about this concept of solutions. That is where we take a solute and we dissolve it in a solvent and then those two together form a solution. Okay, and so we're thinking about it, so it's the specific type of mixture and the idea that, that, that we're looking at with this solution is we're saying, okay, well, if we have a certain amount of a certain amount of solvent, say for example water, our one of our most common, and we have a certain amount of solute dissolved in it, and then we have take the same two ingredients, the same amount of solvent, but I dissolve more solute in it. We need a way to be able to express the way in which these two things are different. And when we're talking about solutions, this is where we use this idea of concentration. It's like if you're making cordial at home. Okay, you know, you, you take a certain amount of syrup and you mix it with a certain amount of water, um, and so you, you make it to a certain strength um, of, of what you would say, like a certain, and in, in chemistry terms, we would say you've made it to a certain concentration. Now, if you've added a bit more syrup or a bit less syrup, you know, you make it a bit, uh, a bit, you know, stronger in flavour or it's a bit weaker, so it's a bit more concentrated or a bit more dilute, um, that then we can see that depending on how much syrup or solute that you add, that you end up with a very different result. You end up with cordial that's barely got any flavour at all versus cordial that's so strong that it kind of, you know, kind of makes you take a breath. And so what we can do is that rather than just use it, describe things in very general qualitative terms, we can actually quantify how much solute is in this, you know, a certain amount of solvent to make the solution. Okay, and this is what we talk about as concentration. We're now going to spend a bit of time talking through the different, um, the different ways that we quantify concentration. So the first one that we use is called, which is which is more of a chemistry specific one. We call molarity slash molar concentration. Okay, and so the units for this one are moles for every one litre, or we might say, write it like this, moles per litre. Okay, so that is how many moles of solute for every litre of solvent. Typically, we're talking about water here. Okay, we're talking about aqueous solutions. You know, so um, e.g. we might be saying we have a 1.5 mole per litre um, sodium chloride solution. Okay, so it's got 1.5 moles of sodium chloride for every litre of water. Now, the reason this is really helpful is that we are certainly becoming much more confident working with moles as a, as a chemistry counting unit. And so being able to express the concentration this way is really useful in stoichiometry terms. You know, we can do calculations with it really easily. We can kind of, and, and it's also, we can use molar mass to be able to measure out the right amount that we need to make solutions in this way. The problem with this is that it's a very chemistry specific way to describe concentration. That is, if you... Um, go down to Bunnings or you know a hardware store and you say all right I, I need um, a hydrochloric acid solution and I need it to be 12 moles per liter um, they're going to give you a very strange look unless they've studied chemistry and so that is there is um, there are some other more everyday ways that we might express it okay um, the other so the next kind of way which is a much more um, everyday way to do it is what we would call grams per liter Okay, so how many grams for every one litre, or grams, litres to the minus one. Okay, so that is, um, you know, so e.g. Um, the HCl on the bottle that you get is 439 grams for every, um, so, so per litre. So it, would, it tells you how many grams, that is a nine just by the way, excuse my handwriting. So it tells you how many grams of hydrogen chloride that there is mixed in with every litre of acid that you have. For, or sorry, of every, um, of every litre of water that you have. Okay, so if this gives you a really straight away um, a measure you know, of mass for every litre of solvent. Okay, and so everyday products, this is, this is really kind of common. Um, but then the, the reality is that this these two, you know, measures one and two only really work for water-based solutions. But the thing is that in a solu in solution terms, that doesn't, they're not the only ways that we might make up or encounter solutions in everyday life. You know, a solution might be your toothpaste. 
um, solutions might be the medicine that you make up that's actually, you know, it might be in an alcohol kind of solvent because it doesn't dissolve in water. It might be an oil-based thing. Um, you, you, there's lots of other situations like that that um, that using either of those two measures isn't really enough. And uh, so then we have percentage different um, ways of expressing it. So we can have what we could call um, percentage weight for weight or percentage weight per volume or percentage volume for volume. Okay, so the, the W and the V weight and volume respectively. Okay, so what we're then saying is like how many percentage of how many grams per hundred grams of mixture. And then this is this one kind of here, I'll put that one in brackets because it's not, it, it comes up more commonly but it's actually kind of more of an, it, it, it correlates with, with this one here. Whereas here is like how many mils per 100 mils of solution. So this one is where we have solid plus solid. Okay, so we're talking, we're, we're not really talking about dissolving in water so much, we're talking about kind of like a more complex kind of whole um, mixture. So your, your toothpaste, for example, is going to be a classic example of this. You know, it's not really dissolved in water, it's kind of, it's this own kind of gel thing that's going on. Okay, and then here is where now we're talking about liquid mixed in liquid. So yes, we can talk about it as a solution, as we've got solute and solvent, but that's not really the, um, that, that's not how com common, like in everyday usage, that people would understand it. So this one, for example, I've just mentioned, might be something like toothpaste. Here we might be talking about, say, something like alcohol. Okay, so for example, like on a wine bottle, it will tell you how many mils of ethanol, which is the alcohol in the, that's giving the, the content there, how many um, mils of alcohol for every 100 mils of the total mixture. You know, then every 100 mils of wine, how many mils of alcohol would there be? And then every 100 mils of beer, how many mils of alcohol would there be? Because then that's kind of the measure that we use to quantify standard drinks. One standard drink is, is classified as 10 um, mils of ethanol. And so then depending on how many mils of ethanol there is per every 100 mils, that then determines how many standard drinks, what percentage it is. Okay, you know, beer might be 5%, wine might be 12%, for, you know, 14%, spirits might be 30 40%. Okay, and so that's kind of where that sort of measure of concentration comes from. And so you can see that these kind of apply in particular contexts. Okay, that that's, that's kind of why they, they end up being quite useful. Um, and so, now there is a fourth one. I'm just going to clear off a little bit of space here, just on my board. Please keep that one on yours, where you're writing your notes. But then the last one here is what we call parts per million or PPM. Now, this is a, a measure of concentration that we're talking about trace quantities. Okay, in terms of, right, well, really, really tiny amounts of something that, that if we were to measure it in any one of these other sort of measures, would the, the, the magnitude would be so small that it starts to get impractical. Too many zeros or too many powers of 10 to the minus 3 or whatever. Um, and beyond. And so parts per million, we can also go down to parts per billion and parts per trillion at really, really trace quantities of things. Um, and so one part per million is the same as one milligram per litre in terms of this kind of level of concentration. Okay, and so, you know, if I have a, a an amount that's got um, 12 parts per million, that's the same as 12 milligrams of that thing in every litre of solution, if it's water, for example. But the beauty of, of this is that it's per million parts of whatever mixture it is. Okay, so, um, so one part of solute, whatever that might be, per million parts of mixture. Now, the reason that I say that is that we also talk about things in parts per million when it's in air as well. So talking about pollutants in the atmosphere, for example, air is not water. They're not. We're not talking about it in the same way. But we can say, you know, so it might be one um, one liter of solute per, for every million liters of air. Okay, and that's kind of the same sort of ratio that we're talking about. Again, we're talking trace quantities typically. Um, 
And when we're talking about large amounts in the atmosphere, then we tend to talk in terms of percentages because it's more practical to work with. Um, but trace quantities, pollution, things like that, that's where this kind of comes in. Okay, so each you can see that each of these measures of concentration has certain applications, kind of everyday kind of chemistry um, understanding, but you have to have chemistry understanding, everyday kind of mass per litre understanding, where we're talking about percentages, whether we're talking about solids or liquids, and then looking at trace quantities with parts per million. Okay, don't forget to like or and subscribe. Um, it's wonderful to have you watching. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.